Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube, and I am in Redmond, Washington. I am at the mothership behind me. I'm in the buildings where Power BI folks are making all the things for you, and I've been gone for a little while. This is the fourth week of I've been traveling straight. Like I said, I'm in Washington now, and I want to get back into the swing of things. And to do that, I want to have a roundup. Let's just look back over the last couple of weeks and see what all the big things were that came out and just let's get back up to speed on what's going on and then we'll get back into the regular rhythm next week. If this is your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig into the roundup. First up on the list is the February service roundup and also mobile and gateway. And we had a couple things on the service side. First off is the ability to automatically push apps out to individuals instead of uh, people having to consume apps and like opt into it. So you can get those pushed out if you want people joining your organization and then automatically getting access to apps that are relevant to them, you can do that. We've also announced the availability of P4 and P5 SKUs for premium. So those are out there bigger and better. There was a new February gateway update. So you can check out those items down below as well as the ability to share reports inside of mobile apps. Persistent filters are now available in the Power BI service. This is awesome. So if I set filters and then I leave the report and then come back to the report, it's gonna remember those filters that I had selected before. I can always reset back to default, but it's gonna remember those filters so I don't have to reset it every time I come back into the report. That's awesome. For more details on how persistent filters work, check out the link down in the description below, along with links for all other items in this roundup and links to bonus items as well. You can now share items in Power BI out with people that don't have an organizational email. So this is Gmail, Hotmail, Outlook. A lot of people have been asking for this for a long time. It is now available. So when you share reports or dashboards, or when you add people to the access list for apps, these can be any email address, whether it's personal email addresses or organizational email addresses. How does this work? It's all done through the magic of Azure AD B2B and all the same licensing options apply here as I've talked about before with Azure AD B2B. So you either need to be covered by a pro license or the content needs to be backed by premium. So be sure to make sure that all that's in line, but when they go to check out that report, it's good to go. We've got a new desktop release. Whoo, I get so excited on these releases. This is the March 2018 release of Power BI Desktop for the Power BI service. And in this release, there were a bunch of things which are awesome. First and foremost, if you haven't seen it, you can check out the BI Bake Off for an example of this. Report tooltips in your reports. So instead of the normal tooltips when you hover over items, now when you hover over, you will actually see a report page as the tooltip. It's actually pretty cool. This is a preview feature, so be sure to turn on that feature inside of Power BI Desktop. Bookmarks are now generally available, so those are out of preview. We've also added the ability to disable visual headers when you're in the reading mode of a report. So what this means, particularly when you're embedding, is normally you would see in the headers the ability to go into focus mode or export data. You can disable that bar on the top, and so it won't show when you're in reading mode. So that's pretty cool. We also had a bunch of new custom visuals that are available for you to use. One in particular that you should absolutely check out is the new Mapbox custom visual. This visual is very cool if you're into mapping and want to do some cool things. Check that out. From the data connector side of things, the SAP HANA connector had some improvements. Support for multi-dimensional direct query is now generally available for that. The SAP BW connector is now generally available as well as the Azure Analysis Services connector. There were also some other improvements, so be sure to check out the blog post for examples of all of these items as well as check out the things I wasn't able to mention in this video. You can find the link down in the description below. All right, who's ready for some augmented reality? we've announced a preview of an app that you can use for Power BI for mixed reality. So what this does is kind of what you're thinking. I can have reports in augmented reality through HoloLens. So if you're looking at HoloLens or you want to give it a try, if you've got one available to you, check out this app, give it a try. This is a preview. And so it's kind of a taste of things to come, of things we're looking at and trying on the Power BI side to really improve experiences and to try new things. I'd love to hear your comments on it and what you think. 
Also, if you have a HoloLens, let me know about that too. All right, everyone, what was your favorite item? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. For myself, I've got to go with report tooltips inside of Power BI Desktop. That is very cool. If I had to pick a second one, it would be the mixed reality with Power BI, except I don't have a HoloLens. Someone want to let me borrow it? That'd be cool. If you like this video, hit that like button. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos. And from both Patrick and myself, as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.